Red Hat acquired by IBM for $34 billion. What's in store for Red Hat and Fedora? Coming up next. Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So, a fairly shocking story to me. I honestly did not know that Red Hat was on the market and up for sale. I think that's exactly what Red Hat wanted. Uh, they did approach other companies, it appears, uh, before approaching IBM, and the sale went through for $34 billion. Initially, when I heard that, I was a little bit shocked. I thought that was maybe a little low, but then I thought maybe it's actually a slightly higher valuation than what I expected. They are the world's biggest open source portfolio. They've got software, they've got some patents, they've got cloud-based storage architecture that IBM was seeking. So let's have a look at one of the articles and see what they have to say. Now this came from Ars Technica. And it says, what me worry? This is fine. IBM acquires Red Hat. I'm less worried about Red Hat and a little bit more worried about Fedora. But looking at some of Fedora's charter documents, I think they're going to be okay too. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, that's the bottom line. But let's dig in and see what they're saying. They say, this is no trick. And whether it's a treat remains to be seen. IBM and Red Hat executives announced Monday their IBM is acquiring the open source software and cloud services company in a $34 billion cash deal. Everybody thinks the cloud is the ultimate. Everybody's trying to get into it. The bad news is for IBM, they're not, a, well, we'll get into that later, but the bad news is there are many other companies already ensconced into cloud services and doing a fantastic job out there. The biggest one that I can think of is Amazon. So there are many, many companies to compete with in cloud services. So I'm not really sure what IBM's plan is. The article goes on to say Red Hat will remain a standalone business unit within IBM. And an IBM spokesperson says that IBM will remain committed to Red Hat's open source ethos, its developer community, and its open source community relationships. And I'm hoping by saying that they particularly mean the one with Fedora. Red Hat will maintain its current leadership team and remain in its current headquarters and facilities. The culture will remain as well, though it's possible IBM and Red Hat may cross-pollinate a bit more than they have in the past. I think that says it all. Now, the thing about these types of news releases are they're really designed less to be true and more to soften the blow for stockholders. In other words, whenever there's uncertainty in the stock market when companies are merging or if they're diversifying or whatever it is they're doing, uh, there is a tendency for the stock to dip. If it's a really good merger and it sounds like it's a good idea for both companies, stock, of course, will climb. I haven't taken the time to go look i think for ibm the acquirement of red hat is probably a good thing so maybe their stock increased a little bit and they came out with this particular release saying hey it's all kosher don't worry we're not going to step on any toes in red hat it's all good well facebook tried that with instagram and of course the original creators of instagram left the company same thing happened with what's up now, that may say more about how Facebook handles takeovers of other companies than it does a merger in general. But looking at this IBM merger and the past that I know about IBM, one thing they are very good at is cultivating technology and then spinning it off. A good example of that, of course, is Lenovo, which is doing very, very well. Another example that I don't know if anybody remembers all the fantastic IBM hard drives they used to make. They were so reliable. Um, they spun off that entire segment of their business. And I was really, really surprised because it was doing so well and it was so profitable. But I think 
even back then in the 90s and 2000s, IBM was beginning to think, you know, we've got to make some changes here. We have more intellectual property than we do uh, physical property or products. So why don't we continue in that vein and divest ourselves of the uh, physical products that we sell, except for mainframes and uh, systems that are higher level? and go into this intellectual property area and see what we can come up with. And a result recently is the purchase of Red Hat. I always felt Red Hat was doing well, so I was very surprised. I think they are doing well, to be honest, or they wouldn't have uh, gotten a $34 billion cash deal. So they must have been doing pretty good. What is good for Red Hat with the purchase of IBM? Well, they can be more on the cutting edge because on their own, if they upset the apple cart too much or made a mistake, it could have caused an issue where essentially Red Hat may have lost enough stock market share or may have lost enough of, of their backing to founder a little bit and start to run into problems and basically run low on money. Well, think of IBM as this behemoth, this monstrous company that, quite frankly, would take decades to fall. If you look at General Electric, GE, I don't know if anybody's been keeping track of GE, but that is a giant company that has made some of the worst decisions in the last five or ten years and has become just a shadow of its former self, but it still is a huge company. So IBM is one of those companies. It's purported that IBM produced the counting business machines in the 30s and 40s, and they had to sell them to a third party, which was another country, Switzerland, because they couldn't sell them directly to Germany because there was an embargo in effect and some sanctions in effect at the time because of World War II. I'm sure you can guess what those counting machines were used for. Now, a lot's changed in IBM since World War II, and that's a good thing, but I'm just painting a picture here. Number one, we have a company that is very old. Number two, their original business was International Business Machines, IBM. Number three, they've got deep, deep coffers and they can afford to take some hits and they can afford to allow Red Hat to expand that portfolio a little bit and experiment a little bit more. So that's the good news. What's the bad news? Well, Historically, IBM has made some incredible blunders. Uh, one example, and, and you can take it for what you will, is their version of DOS, the disk operating system. They <laughs> tried to compete with MS-DOS and failed miserably. They got involved with Microsoft in the 80s and early 90s to develop an operating system, and together they developed some of the core features in OS2, for which Microsoft took, because they had the intellectual rights to it, took some of that core uh, software design and created Windows NT, and the first version came out, I think it was 3.51, in the early 90s and it used the same core and kernel as OS2 did. And OS2 of course was the graphical interface and operating system for IBM. They spent tons of money advertising OS2 warp and trying to win the PC war and trying to win the operating system war. Windows NT finally morphed into Windows 2000 and then Windows XP and the deal was sealed. I mean, by then, OS2 Warp was gone. It was history. IBM's implementation of certain things and projects like OS2 and their version of DOS was dismal at best. I mean, it really was. They also purchased the licensing for MS-DOS. I don't remember how much it was, but I, as I recall the licensing, they paid quite a bit. 
And the irony of it is Microsoft went and bought MS-DOS from another company for a very small sum of money and was raking in the money from IBM and doing a very good job with that disk operating system. That's how they all got their start. So IBM was so big they couldn't see, you know, they couldn't read between the lines. They couldn't see the writing on the wall, so to speak, and they missed some opportunities. And that's not uncommon. I think that their AS400 server line has had questionable success in the market, but of course they are very individualized and specific systems for a specific purpose, so it's not like you're going to see them everywhere. Sometimes I wonder, how the heck is IBM making their money anymore? Well, the how is in that intellectual property that they're out there looking for. So, am I worried? Uh, I am a little bit worried. I'm afraid that IBM will meddle too deeply into Red Hat's upper management layer and cause some disruption and cause some of the management to leave and some of these key managers and higher executives are part of what makes Red Hat's involvement in Fedora possible. Now I went and looked at the budget for Fedora and it's interesting that their budget is actually very tiny so Looking at their fiscal year budget, they come out 204990 And if you look at the sources, you can see who's providing the majority of it. Now you might say, how in the world can the Fedora project run on two hundred grand a year? And the answer is, they're not. Uh, what we're not seeing in the budget is all the manpower that companies provide in the sense that they provide support for um, the kernel and packages and you know creating the fedora spin that basically gets produced every six months on a very tight schedule so if red hat were to yank the um, red hat coders that are working in fedora because they do mention that in some of their other documentation here, it would be a big concern. I don't know what exactly would happen to the Fedora project. So I'm not saying they're wholly dependent on Red Hat, but they are very dependent on Red Hat. And when you're coding for Red Hat and you think, you know, I've got a great idea for something we can do, some changes we can make on a critical package, they're not going to do it to Red Hat. Changes in Red Hat are glacial, meaning slow. Changes in Fedora are quick and more of an experimental nature, although when they produce that six-month spin and release it, it is quite stable. So I don't want you to think of it as something like um, the test or unstable releases that you can get for Ubuntu or Debian. It's much, much more stable than that. Although with the last Fedora release, uh, 28, I had more persistent bugs in the initial month or two after release than I've ever had before. I've heard from many other people saying that wasn't the case, but... I actually did so I don't know what will happen one thing's for sure we would not like to see any type of disruption in the quality or approach to how Fedora is created because Fedora isn't a publicly traded company and they're a not-for-profit project I'm not sure how much IBM cares and that may mean if they're not meddling in Red Hat's affairs too much then Fedora will continue for the long term as it is. On the other hand, if they do uh, get involved with Red Hat and start making structural changes, you know, cultural changes, because the IBM culture is very, very different than the Red Hat culture, you got to think, you know, IBM was the company that basically created the dark blue and black white uh, dress shirt setup you know the suits basically they were always running around the suits were everybody else you know was kind of dressed like hippies you know in the 80s but well okay maybe not in the 80s but anyway 
Uh, so uh, IBM's very different. It does remain to be seen what's going to happen. Now, looking at Fedora's mission, they say here that they are dedicated to free software and content. Advancing software and content freedom is a central community goal, which we accomplish through the software and content we promote. We choose free alternatives to proprietary code and content and limit the effects of proprietary or patent-encumbered code on the project. Now, somewhere in here, I can't remember where I read it, they do mention that um, Red Hat is a major participator in the coding and structure of Fedora. So I don't remember where that was, but... Going on, I found it interesting that the code of conduct here for Fedora, they're one of the last bastions of open source that haven't been taken down by this whole code of conduct debacle that's going on. They have a very simple, straightforward code of conduct. I think it's important <clears throat> that their code of conduct does not change right now. It would be bad timing. But if... IBM cannot see a logical interest in Fedora, meaning how is Fedora helping us make money and how does it make Red Hat better? We know that Fedora makes Red Hat better. Us, those who use open source, know this. IBM are corporate executives. They may call the shots saying it seems ridiculous and their mission is so far removed from our mission we couldn't possibly have a need for them while we're developing cloud services and more cloud technology with Red Hat. I hope that is not the case. So if you're on Fedora, um, times will be interesting, but don't panic and don't be overly concerned. I don't expect any sweeping changes for the next several years, and I think Fedora will keep on its regular schedule with the quality output that it's been doing so don't get panicked yet but if you're using red hat as a corporation i would be somewhat concerned now i know many companies that are transitioning to CentOS entirely and we're not talking about small companies um, we're talking about larger companies i had an offer to do some contract work to migrate about 400 servers from Red Hat OS to CentOS, which if you don't know already, CentOS is basically a bit-for-bit -bit copy of Red Hat with all of the Red Hat logos stripped out and replaced with CentOS. And much like the Fedora project, it's free and completely open source. There is no charge and it's funded, I think, by some organizations and coders who really don't have to do much coding it's more compiling and they produce cent os which is great so again don't be too concerned just yet uh, if you're using red hat and it's for productivity and you are financially on the line and you're dependent on red hat you want to monitor things closely if you like the red hat support that you get for your server and the services that you get you're not going to want to switch to CentOS because it's a little bit harder to do in my opinion all right that's all i've got for you i hope you enjoyed this video if you did like and subscribe pretty please those subscriptions really help me out an extra special thank you for getting me to 10,000 plus subscribers. I'm really glad to see that you're here. You got your eyeballs on my videos that I'm releasing and you're enjoying them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.